Hi, welcome to Chemistry 3007. Approximate wave functions uh, at the University of Western Australia. In the last lectures I've explained to you the Hartree wave function and the Hartree-Fock wave function. I explained to you that the Hartree product wave function wasn't anti-symmetric. The Hartree-Fock wave function is the simplest wave function using products, separation of variables that's anti-symmetric. Now, this separation of variables ideas, well, I think it's a very simple idea. There's no reason why such a function should give a good wave function. It turns out we can calculate the orbitals in these Hartree-Fock wave functions and even get a total energy. Our objective in these lectures is to see how that's done. But let's jump ahead and, and see how accurate are these Hartree-Fock wave functions? In order to assess that, we have to look at the predictions relative to experiments. So I'll just give you a short slide on that. Firstly, comparing bond lengths. So here are the Hartree-Fock results uh, using one series of functions to approximate the molecular orbitals, one basis set we call that, and a slightly better one. And the axis here is in uh, picometers, in picometers. So the deviation of predicted bond lengths uh, when we minimize the energy of, of the molecular system so that the forces on the nuclei are zero, it turns out that the accuracy is of order 0 0.025 angstrom. Uh, that's very small. That's really, really good. It doesn't change much when we use uh, much uh, a different set of functions. It turns out we have an, an even better wave function, uh, the first improvement to the Hartree-Fock wave function, the MP2 wave function. How, how does that do? Well, it turns out that it overcorrects at a small basis set. Uh, the numbers become slightly bigger on average. But here comes the numbers from a slightly better basis set and the numbers are spot on. Of course there's a variation around here but the mp2 wave function has for a series of small molecules uh, an accuracy of 0, 0.00 angstroms plus or minus we can say maybe 0 0.01 angstroms. Wow that's really accurate and precise too. Accuracy means the mean is close to here. Precision means the deviation of the predictions are very close. Hmm. So apparently we don't have to go very much beyond Hartree-Fock to get excellent results. We'll explain what this MP2 wave function is later. What about the electron density from this wave function? I suppose it's pretty good as well. Let's have a look. Well, you'd be wrong. Here is a table of dipole moments, labelled by mu, and quadrupole moments, taken from a paper by Mark Spackman, who's recently retired from our department. This is an excellent paper, have a look at it. But we can look at, say, carbon monoxide here, using a certain set of, this is the Hartree-Fock approximation, sometimes called SCF or Hartree-Fock. Hartree-Fock, it has prediction of minus 1.11 device. The benchmark result when we use a much better set of functions but still a molecular orbital Hartree-Fock approximation 0 0.089. We have to use functions to fit our molecular orbitals and the more functions we use the bigger the calculation takes so this is a benchmark uh, SCF calculation. So there's, there's some small change about 20 percent here but when we use a much better wave function, we get a dipole moment of 0.34. Wow, the dipole moment actually changes sign. It predicts one, here the Hartree-Fock approximation predicts one of the atoms being negatively charged. The better wave function predicts it to be the other way around. And this actually agrees quite well with experiment 0.407. Still not perfect, but uh, that's the result. Wow, so the electron density isn't always that good, but it's a bit of a trick here. You have to keep in mind 
that although the dipole moment in, the dipole moment has two parts, it includes where the electrons are, and it also has a nuclear term, um, which tells you where the charge of the nuclei. So there's two contributions: one from where the electrons are, and one from where the nuclei, and they cancel because the nuclei are positively charged, the electrons are negatively charged. The dipole moment contributions from the electrons and the nuclei are opposite in sign and they cancel. And that's the origin of why this doesn't disagree. So the DFT and MP2 results are much better, they're closer to these results here. But essentially uh, CO is a little bit of a special case. If we, if we go to H2O for example, we have uh, benchmark SCF results of 6.6 .6 minus and the very highest level calculations are minus 6.2. This is a much bigger dipole moment. It is much more dominated by electrons in here with this electronegative atom. And so the cancellation of the nuclear and electron terms is not as great. And so we have a smaller absolute error. So you've got to be tricky when you compare um, values with experiment, you've got to think about whether the numbers are small and flipping in sign only because they're just very small. That's all I wanted to say. See you later.